Good day everyone, I'm PM Glory, an anime illustrator and I'm gonna share my knowledge about skin coloring. I would like to clear that there is no specific one right way to color skin since art style differ from one another. However, there are things we can consider to make our skin coloring more appealing and better. That can apply in general whether you got a realistic art style, anime art style, or whatever art style you have. So, let's start! Obviously, the first thing you have to do is to pick a base color. Base color is usually lighter and paler than usual since it's gonna be more darker and vibrant after we add a shade. So, consider that when picking a base color. Anyways, let's proceed in the second step. The next step is we're gonna add ambient occlusion or in simpler words, I call it soft shade because I'm using soft airbrush when doing this. So let's add another layer so we can have a full control on the illustration just in case we make some mistake. We can easily correct it without affecting the other layer. Also, don't forget to clip the layer so the shade won't leak outside the base color. In this layer, I'll be using Clip Studio Paint Default Watercolor Brush, Soft Airbrush, and Blur Tool. Now let's pick a color that is more darker and vibrant than the base color. Make sure you watch the video till the end because I'll discuss some basic color theory later after I demonstrate my skin coloring tutorial. Okay, we're gonna imagine where will the shadow cast even there is no light source. For instance, a shadow will cast here near the skirt because when two things are close together, it casts shadows in between. So let's add a shade here near the skirt and in the edge of the leg. So let's speed it up to save our time. The next step is optional, it's more about anatomy but this can make it look better especially for anime and realistic art style. This is also applicable in cartoony art style and I'll show you later why. In this step, we will consider the anatomy and make the kneecap more noticeable by adding a shade. We have to understand first how kneecap works and how will it cast a shadow but unfortunately this is a skin coloring tutorial so I will not tackle anatomy that much. So again, let's add another layer and make sure it's clipped. Then let's just imagine that the kneecap is somewhere here and it's casting a shadow like this. This is a bit tricky to do so I suggest you to study anatomy and use some reference if you want to apply this step in your skin coloring routine. Okay, there you go. Just like what I've said earlier, this is applicable to any art style. This is an example of an e-cup shade in a cartoony art style. And it's good to see that we can also apply anatomy even in simplest way. This also applies in other body parts such as collar bones, shoulder, back, and such. For the fourth step, we're just gonna do the same thing we did in the second step, but this time we will be using a more vibrant and cooler color again. So why are we doing this? And why are we repeating the same step with a different color? Just making it more appealing by adding more variations of shade. So yeah, let's add another layer, clip it in, then let's go! For the fifth step, this shading will depend on the environment, meaning we will be relying on a light source. Once again, add another layer but this time we will be using multiply layer and then clip it in. Now we're gonna pick a color that is more vibrant and darker again. 
then we're good to go so let's say the light source is coming from here in front of the legs and it's casting shadow here behind the legs that's where we're gonna add some shade okay let's speed it up In the sixth step, we will add subscattering. Subsurface scattering is the effect caused by the light that penetrates the surface or let's say penetrates the skin because our subject is a skin. I will not tackle this too much since we're just discussing the basics and subscattering might be a little bit complicated especially for beginners. However, I'm gonna make sure that you can grasp an idea of what is subscattering. Okay, we're gonna add a new layer, but this time below the multiply layer. Clip it in, then pick a color that is more reddish and vibrant. So, subscatter usually appears between the shadow and the light. Let's say this is the shadow and this is where the light hitting the skin. So, the subscatter will appear somewhere here. Anyways, we'll just do the same thing but make sure we don't overdo it since it's gonna look awkward. Alright, we're almost there. The seventh step. This time, we're just gonna add some solid highlights meaning we won't be using any soft brush. We will add solid highlights using solid brushes, obviously. <laughs> also, don't forget that this is more like a part of an art style. It, this is not a necessary thing to do when we are coloring a skin, but if you feel like adding solid highlights would make our skin coloring look better, then let's add it in our skin coloring routine. As usual, let's add another layer. I'll be using the default brush of Clip Studio Paint. And then we'll add the highlights here where the light is hitting the skin and also some in the edge of the leg. Well, that's all and again, we don't have to overdo it because it's gonna look awkward and imbalanced. Remember to keep things moderate. And the moment we're all waiting for, the last step. In this step, we're gonna add highlights, but this time we will be using the Add Glow layer to amplify the effect of the highlight. And we're gonna use Soft Brush when doing this. Alright, let's add the last layer, clip it in, use the Ink Tool to grab the base color, and we're good to go. Actually, it's not that hard. We'll just have to touch some areas where the light is hitting and make sure not to overdo it or your character will shine like a star. So there you go, congratulations and we're done! So we're done with the actual demonstration. I hope you had an idea how I color my character's skin and you can use that as a reference to improve and blend it with your art style. Now let me share a couple skin coloring tips that can probably help you to get better. First skin coloring tip, make sure that you're also turning the hue and the saturation when picking a shade color. Most of the common mistake people do or let's say artists do is when picking a shade color, they just pull down the brightness to make it darker. But the problem is, when we do that, the color becomes too dull and flat. The color value becomes too low and it will look bad compared to a shade with a vibrant and cooler color. This also applies to everything, meaning you can also apply this color theory when shading clothes and other materials. Second skin coloring tip is do not blur or blend too much. 
Our overall illustration will look low quality when we do this. Blending shade in skin is necessary but we should not overdo it. Trust me, it will look bad. As much as possible, we want to blend the skin shade without removing the sharp details. So that's all for now. What we have tackled here are just the basics. However, I believe that it gives us a better understanding how skin coloring works. I'm PM Glory and I'm rooting for everyone's improvement. See you again in my next tutorials.